So on the heels of Princeton alumna Susan Patton telling female students to use college to find a husband, another controversial commentary by writer Laura Hempville poses a big question for all women out there. Is business school worth it? A new Harvard study says the cold hard truth is many more women in business school drop out of the workforce within 10 years of graduating to get married and have kids than men. So should we bag B-School altogether? A powerhouse money talker panel now to weigh in. Former Treasury Department advisor Susan Ox, retail analyst Heatha Prabhakar, and to represent the male voice here, good luck with that one, radio host and criminal defense attorney Adam Thompson. Adam, you're going to need those lawyerly skills, I think, here. Um, okay, so the basis of this study is basically when you look at the details of it, uh, there were more, fewer women, of course, went to business school, much less. It was 38% of the class was women. But then a much higher percentage then didn't work once they went through business school. And you have to ask the question, given that it's almost $200,000 to get it done, is it worth it? Susan, go ahead. What do you think? As, a, as an HBS graduate yourself. Yes, I am an HBS grad, and I have to say that my experience was dramatically different than that profile that you saw where a lot of people were talking about. It's this kind of frat house atmosphere. I actually felt very supported and encouraged by a lot of the men there. Um, so I thought it was a great experience. It's really broadening for people. Um, you learn a lot of good skills. And the real truth is that women are actually changing the dynamics of the workforce. So a lot of them do drop out to have children, but then a lot of them come back, and they're really creating new dynamic ways to... Um, uh, build new firms sort of that that uh, focus on ways people want to work in the 21st century. Heatha, you know, this struck a chord with me because I happen to anecdotally have a lot of female friends who went to Harvard and Stanford Business School who are not working any longer and went and went through the whole business school program and worked for a business for a while, owned their own business and are now at home full time with no real sight of going back anytime soon. What did you think of this? Sure, I think you and I both have those same friends. And I have to, as much as I respect and love Susan, I have to say that, you know, with according to the Intuit Spending Index, people are spending 40% more on education between 2011 and 2013. Why would you want to spend all that money when you could get the same experience just starting your own business, getting that entrepreneurial experience, um, you know, and especially for women, uh, I think a lot of us, especially during the recession, we started our own businesses and we got that experience. So it, the only time I would think to advocate for going to business school is if you were in an industry where you, A, don't have the contacts in finance and you want to transition into it or you want to learn those skills. Yeah. But if you want to go, if you're going to business school just to learn the basics of starting a business and the strategy. No, there are, there are a lot it. of jobs that you need the pedigree for, for sure, but we hear your point. Adam, you feeling brave? You ready? You ready to wade in here? Hey, I'm always, always, ready, always ready to rock. Listen, I think the panel both make, they both make a good point. I think the big issue here is, are you getting the bang for your buck if you go to get an MBA? I could tell you haven't gone to law school, which is a three-year program. You, you don't really need three years. So one issue that has to be addressed is, is the length of the program really sufficient for what you need to accomplish? After a few core courses, really, that's the background you need in law. Throw us into the pit, so to say. Let mm. us go out there and actually get practical experience. I think the problem with a lot of these programs and the NBA programs in particular is you could have a great core program, but they t give you so many different electives and so many other courses to take and drag it out. It. Yeah. When you graduate, you don't know anything practical. You're you thrown to the wolves and you don't know a thing. So if they <laughs> change the program to make it more practical, where you actually okay. get some internships. But one of the things that struck works. me about this was, it, you know, it is. Maybe this is business school specific because of my friends who have families and work, they sort of thought of a career that was a little bit more flexible or was the kind of career where you could get closer to having it all and continue to work and still have time for your kids and your husband and your family. And I wonder if this is a business school problem where the track that that puts you in, the CEO style job is the one that isn't conducive to working and having kids at the same time that this is a business school problem. Susan, go ahead, being our business school expert. No, I, I don't actually think it is. And if you see the research, what you find is that companies that offer more flex time and em employees that are, have the ability to have a more flexible work environment where they can incorporate their kind of professional and personal goals, you actually see the high performers are more ambitious, especially among the women. Um, and you see, in fact, 
that both men and women are taking, uh, making equal use of things like flex time and more, more flexible work schedules. So I really think that um, we are moving towards an environment where we're trying to make business work better for everybody. And you are seeing women come back in and hire numbers and do more. And just to uh, come back at one of Heath's points, yeah. um, entrepreneurship among women, you're seeing much more women come and start their own businesses, but it's, they're much older. They're actually over 40. But did they go to business majority. school? I mean, I think her point is that you don't need to go to business school to start your own business. It can and be again, either way, I wonder, but, but the is point this, of this a business school problem? Well, but the point of this study was saying, or this, this, this article was saying, you know, women are wasting their time in business school, and I'm saying actually women want more experience right. before they go and start jobs. Okay, okay. I'm going to say the thing that's going to get me in the most trouble here, because I don't know if any of the rest of you are brave enough for this. Are these women going to business school and finding really wealthy, fantastic husbands, and that's why they're not working? I'm just asking. I'm not. I know. I know. I'm Susan's address that. All, so my uh, feminist listen, friends gonna, across the country. I don't think. I, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. Heath, the go ahead. Well, well, Susan recovers. The tweets I mean, are I think coming. That's just, the hang tweets on. are coming. I know. Go ahead, Heath. I, I think that's just maybe a. You know, maybe they met someone that they like at business school. But I don't think these women are necessarily going okay. to business school just to get an MRS degree. No, I didn't degree, say that. I didn't but, say that. That's not what I said. I said, are they? Is it an environment? I mean, because that was the point. Of the, of the woman at the Princeton graduation who came out and said, women, like, this is your best opportunity to find the best husband. You're here with somebody who respects educated women, who's surrounded by women who are smart and ambitious. This is the best pool of men you will ever be around. You should get married now before you leave. She took a lot of heat for it, but there was there was some kernel of something in that. Well, and I'm wondering, are frankly, these women exposed to fantastic men, and that's why they're getting married and they're not well, working at it? Well, she took $100,000 just to be exposed to fantastic men. There's a great bar downtown at Wall Street. You can do that for <laughs> okay, $5 yeah, that's a good drink. Dating service Adam, <laughs> Adam, <laughs> Adam, hop back in. Wade, back in. What there's do you some, think? Some, there's some really good dating services to accomplish that if you're looking for a date. You know, we can go through a bunch of them right now. I don't think people are going to any advanced education programs to meet some people. If they are, you're there for the wrong reasons. I mean, listen, the bottom line is this. All advanced education is good if you can get it and it helps promote and push you further along in your business, great. Mm -hmm. But great. a lot of the opportunities and jobs today, they don't really require it. And there's people out there getting in all these advanced degrees, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. and it does nothing for them. And, except to say, hey, I got a really nice piece of paper hanging on my wall from Harvard. And, Who cares? And, you, and it may have enriched your mind and whether or not you're working as a result afterwards may not be the point. It was the education that was the value there. That's that's. I'll end on that note. Thank you all for being brave and doing that with me. I appreciate it very much. All right. Next on money is.